In the Qing Dynasty, giving birth kid was imperial women's most important responsibility. In Qing inner court rules, no regulation that the emperor must promote the imperial women after she gave birth a kid. But in practice, once giving birth a kid, the imperial woman at least could get the title Guiren, noble lady. Qing dynasty Henry system having eight ranks happened in Yongzheng's time. Yongzheng had 29 imperial women. Six imperial women gave birth 10 boys and four girls. Yongzheng inherited this realm at age 44. He was one of the busiest emperors in ancient China. Only imperial noble Qian gave birth a boy after Yongzheng became the emperor. Imperial concubine Qian Liu Shi came into the inner court through imperial household department selection. In 1729, she became choice lady. In beginning 1730, Liu Shi was promoted to first class female attendant. Three months later, she became noble lady. In June 1733, noble lady Qian gave birth Yongzheng's youngest son. In following day, she was promoted to imperial concubine. When Qianlong became the emperor, she became consort. Although there is only one sample, in my opinion, in Yongzheng's time, giving birth kid couldn't help the imperial women get promotion very much. Because when Yongzheng became the emperor, he immediately secretly promoted Qianlong to the crown prince. He wasn't eager to have a kid. Emperor Xianlong had about 50 imperial women. His 17 boys and 10 girls were born by 10 imperial women. In Xianlong's 17 high-rank imperial women, seven of them didn't give birth any kid. When Empress Xiaoxian and Steppe Empress give birth kids, they already became the Empress. The Imperial Noble Consort Zhemin gave birth Qianlong's first son. She passed away before Qianlong became the Emperor. The Consort Shu got the Consort title in 1748. Five years later, she gave birth her first son. When the noble consort Yu gave birth kid in 1741, she was first class female attendant. Five days after giving birth kid, she was promoted to the imperial concubine. Qianlong didn't like her very much, but Qianlong really loved her son Yongqi and she lived long enough. So she finally got the noble consort title. The noble consort Xin got her imperial concubine title in 1754. She gave birth to princess in 1755 and 1757. In, 17, in 1763, she was promoted to the consort. The consort Dun got her imperial concubine title in 1771. Three years later, she was pregnant. Qianlong promoted her to the consort. In 1775, the consort Dun gave birth Qianlong's youngest daughter. The Empress Xiao Yi got her consort title in 1748. Seven years later, she gave birth her first kid. In 1759, the
The consort Ling already had two girls and one boy. After she miscarried, Qin Long promoted her to the noble consort. She became the imperial noble consort after Qin Long's step empress cut her hair. The imperial noble consort Chun Hui gave birth her first kid before Qin Long became the emperor. Her first title was Imperial Concubine Chun. In seventeen thirty seven, Imperial Concubine Chun was promoted to Consort Chun. Five years later, she gave birth her second kid. In January seventeen forty five, the Consort Chun got the Noble Consort title. In December seventeen forty five. She gave birth her last kid. The imperial noble consort Shu Jia got her consort title in seventeen thirty nine, because she gave birth the first son after Qian Long became the emperor. In seventeen forty eight, Qian Long promoted consort Jia to noble consort before she delivered the boy. So in Qian Long's time, most of the time, giving birth kid couldn't help imperial women get promotion. It's more like Qian Long loved some imperial women than visit them more. So those imperial women had more chance to get pregnant. The Empress Jia Qin had seventeen recorded imperial women. His five sons and nine daughters were born by seven imperial women. Imperial concubine, imperial concubine Jian and imperial concubine Xun passed away before Jia Qing inherited the throne. In Jia Qing's seven high-rank consort, the consort Nu. Passed away before Jia Qing became the emperor. Two emperors gave birth kids after they became the empress. The consort Zhuang never gave birth kid. Noble consort noble noble consort Xin's two kids were born before Jia Qing became the emperor. Consort Ru came into the inner court as noble lady. She got her promotions because of she gave birth kids. Consort Hua's daughter died before Jia Qing inherited the throne. Her first title was Imperial Concubine. Her promotion wasn't related to give birth kid. Dao Guang had twenty imperial women. His nine sons and ten daughters were born by seven imperial women. In old Qing empress, Dao Guang treated the imperial women worst. Most of his imperial women were demoted, and didn't restore their title. For example, noble lady Tong's highest rank was noble consort. In eighteen forty four, she was demoted to noble lady. Until Xianfeng became the emperor, she was promoted to imperial concubine. I will tell you the stories of Dao Guang's imperial women in future. Xianfeng was the last emperor who had biological kids in ancient China. He had one daughter and two sons. Because Cixi gave birth to Xianfeng's first son, on the day of delivery, Cixi was promoted to consort. Seven months later, she was promoted to the noble consort. Because Xianfeng never had imperial noble consort, Cixi was the second highest rank imperial woman in Xianfeng's inner court. So. In the Qing Dynasty, when the emperor was eager to have a kid, giving birth a kid 
especially Gil Brasser's boy, definitely could help an imperial woman get promotion. But for most Qing emperors, they have several grown-up kids, so giving birth kids couldn't help a lot. Besides, in the Qing dynasty, the empress could choose the greatest son to inherit the throne. So theoretically, every imperial woman's son had a chance to become the next emperor. It's no necessary to kill others' imperial women's kids.